Hey guys, Donnie B. Learn Pro Recording. Hey, I want to talk to you today about why and why it's important to use a reference track in a mix or a mastering session. We're going to talk about that in a bit, but of course I got something free for you. Go grab my studio growth formula. LearnProRecording.com forward slash studio growth formula. Quick PDF, man. It's going to help you start build and grow your studio, audio engineering, producing business into something that can sustain, maybe even thrive, maybe even help you quit your damn day job. Come on, let's do this. Let's talk about why we use a reference mix. Hey guys, okay, real quick, a couple of reasons to have reference tracks in your mixing and mastering. Let's say somebody's been working in a song in Logic and they send you the WAV files so that you can import them into Pro Tools and you mix. You like to mix in Pro Tools. When you do that, your tracks come in at zero dB and pan straight up, nothing on it, nothing there. You don't have a, a, an idea of what the client had in his head when he was making this song. So you need to ask that client to send you a reference mix. Hopefully that's one that while he was working on it, he bounced it and he sent it to you. Now he sends it to you and now you have what he was kind of thinking. If you're fortunate and they've been working in Pro Tools, they've been producing in Pro Tools and they send you a Pro Tools session, that is your reference mix. They've got levels set, they've got panning set, they might have some plugins on there, they might even have some automation going on. It already sounds good. All you have to do is kind of enhance that. So there's your reference mix built in, okay? Uh, another, another reason to have a reference mix is let's say that uh, you're mixing a song and you're not really familiar with some of the instruments in the song. Let's say it's a Middle Eastern love song or something. Okay, you're not really familiar with it, but to you it sounds like a rock song. So you mix these big drums like, like we mix rock songs, right? You mix that like that. It's not really what the client wanted. So when they get it, they're like, oh, no, 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 that's not really what I'm looking for. It's a Middle Eastern love song. You know, so, well, then, you know, they didn't send you a reference track, so you don't really have an idea. So that's another reason yet to ask for a reference track from your client. Okay, in mastering, your reference tracks are there to help you set levels and clarity and make your song feel like a song that's in your genre, you know, and you want to use a reference track in, uh, definitely a reference track from your genre. If you're mixing country music, you kind of don't want to use a hip hop song as a reference track. It just doesn't really work out like that. Okay, so you're trying to match like levels and feel and that kind of thing in your genre. So there's a couple reasons to use reference tracks. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Hopefully you're enjoying these uh, real quick YouTube videos I've been throwing out all month. It's almost over. I know it's coming to the end, but we got some stuff coming up. We're going to talk to you about at the end of this month. We got some really cool stuff happening. I'm excited to share it with you. I can't wait. My name is Donnie B. I am out of here. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.